In these days and in these times, people may say that this is something that's a wrong thing to do. Or some people may say that this is a bidat thing to do. Or some people may say that this is out of Islam. But these activities and to celebrate the birth of the Prophet ﷺ is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to do. And it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His angels do. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, Verily Allah and His angels send their peace and their blessings and their salutations on the Holy Prophet O oh, you who believe, send your peace and salutations on Him as well. This is the activity of Allah and His angels. Allah Azawajal, who is the creator of the heavens and in the earth, sends good tidings and sends His peace and sends His blessings on the Holy Prophet And we're His weak, low creatures. And this is the one thing that we can do, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is doing and we can also do. And this is where we can meet to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through the love of the Holy Prophet Alhamdulillah, the Holy Prophet came to this world more than 1400 years ago. But we forgot what happened in that night that the Holy Prophet appeared in this world. That his mother, Hazrat Yamina, is saying that from my, I saw from my womb that a light is coming out and that it's lighting up the palaces of Syria and the Basra. She said that I saw a light coming out from my womb that's lighting up the palaces of Basra, which was in Syria. And in that night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his angels and he sent the holy women of paradise to come down to welcome the Holy Prophet. And in that night that the Holy Prophet was born, when he's born as a baby, he raises his finger towards the sky and he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasul. And in that night, when the Holy Prophet was born, he prayed for you and he prayed for me. He prayed for his ummah, he prayed for his nation, and he asked for our forgiveness, and he asked for our shafat. And our Holy Prophet before he passed from this world, he asked for our shafat, and he asked for our forgiveness. So it doesn't it fit to us, and how can we not stand, and how can we not honor, and how can we not praise, that Holy Prophet That on the day of judgment, his rank is so high that people are going to see the situation that's going on on the day of judgment. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is appearing with all of his divine majesty. And the people are going to be very frightened and very scared. And they'll go to the different prophets. And they'll go to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. And they'll say to him, O oh, our father, Hazrat Adam, today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so angry. Please intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and save us. And Hazrat Adam is going to say, O oh, my children, I'm afraid from the appearance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today because I ate from the fruit in the Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me from the earth. So I'm worried about myself. And he'll say, Myself, myself, nafsi, nafsi. And he'll say, Go to another prophet to ask me for his intercession. And then the children of Adam will go and they'll go to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And they'll say, Hazrat Musa, O oh, our prophet, please intercede with us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day when there's no intercession. And Hazrat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Hazrat Musa is going to say, O oh, my children, I am fearful for my Lord on this day, for I've never seen him so angry. And I'm afraid because once I struck a man, he died from when I struck him. And I don't know what my Lord will do with me today. So go and find someone else to be the intercessor for you today. And so they'll go to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And they'll say, Oh, Hazrat Isa, please intercede with us today with our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hazrat Isa is going to say, Oh, my children, I am afraid for my Lord on this day that after I pass from this world, people begin to put me as a partner from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am looking at myself today. Nafsi, nafsi, go look for another prophet. Go to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. And then the nation is going to come to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. And they're going to ask him for his intercession. And Holy Prophet on that moment, in that day on the day of judgment, will go into sajda in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Rise, O my Habib, Ya Habibullah, rise and ask for whatever you want. And intercede for whoever you want. And verily, whatever you ask for will be granted. And whoever
whoever you intercede for will be saved. This is our holy Prophet And to praise him, and to make poetry for him, and to stand in his honor is his sunnah and the sunnah of his sahabi, the Hazrat Hassan al Basri, who was one of the most who was one of the best poets of that time. He said, I swear that no woman has given birth to anyone as beautiful as you, and you were created free from all, free from all faults, as though you were created in the way that you wanted to be created. To praise the Holy Prophet, to celebrate his birth, to show our love to him, is the Sunnah. It's not just the Sunnah of Holy Prophet and his Sahabi, it's the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran, you don't find in the Sunnah of Allah any kind of change. So we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that by this activity that we're doing here tonight, that we're able to have the intercession of the Holy Prophet and that the real love of the Holy Prophet wakes up in our hearts so that we live with that love and we die with that love. And the love in Islam is saying, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran, say to them, O Muhammad, if you love me, then obey the Prophet and follow him. Verily, Allah will love you and he'll forgive your sins. The love in Islam is through following. And the following of the Holy Prophet is through following his sunnah and following his lifestyle. Inshallah, we're asking to follow that lifestyle through those ones that are being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach that lifestyle. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر إلى الذين أوتوا نصيبا من الكتاب يدعون إلى كتاب الله ليكون بينهم سما يتبلى فريق منهم وهم موردون ذلك بأنهم قالوا لن تمسنا النار إلا أيما مردودا وغرهم في دينهم ما كان يفترون فكيف إذا كان مهنيا لا ريب في وقوف يكون نفس ما كسبت وكنا يزمون قل الله ما ملك المرتد في الملك مما تشابت عن كل من تشابت في المن تشاب يدك الغير إنك لا تشي قدير تلج الليل في النهار تلج النهار في الليل وتخرج الغير من الميت وتخرج الميت من الغير وتعطف من تشاب في عين الإساء Hazreti Fahri Alem, Muhammad Mustafa, Salamat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Amina Ali Muhammad Anasi, Oldu Salib Dan, Oldu Oldu Danasi, Jumya Abdullah Dan, Oldu Hamila, Vaktiye Bishu Refta Ayyub Enya Mila.
الخطوة على وجه أبي جاك في بصيرة کہ ایک یہ قمیص قمیص سیم قمیص جو آپ اردو میں کہتے ہیں یہی قمیص عربی میں قرآن کہہ رہا ہے کہ یہ قمیص میں لے جاؤ قرآن کہہ رہا ہے کہ حضرت یوسف علیہ السلام کے الفاظ ہیں کہ میری قمیص لے جاؤ اور میرے ابا کو دو اور ان کی آنکھوں پہ لگاؤ اور ان کی آنکھیں سیدھی ہو صحیح ہو جائیں گے بصیرہ دیکھنے لگیں گے وہ دیکھنے لگیں گے کون کہہ رہا ہے یہ قرآن کہہ رہا ہے آپ ہمارا رب کہہ رہا ہے حضرت یوسف علیہ السلام کے تو کیا ہے وہ کنیکشن کنیکشن کمیز کا کنیکشن کس سے اللہ کے محبوب یوسف علیہ السلام سے وہ کنیکشن ہے اور یہ تو ان کے والد صاحب کی آنکھ کی ٹھیک ہو گئی یہ کنیکشن ہے اور اب جب آگے چلتے ہیں تو اللہ اپنے پیارے نبی کے بارے میں کیا کہتا ہے کبھی ان کا نام سے خطاب نہیں کرتا یا مزمل ہو یا مدسر ہو یا یہ نبی یا رسول ہو اور پھر کیا کہتا ہے اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وما حسنہ کا علیہ الرحمت للعالمی اللہ وما اور نہیں ارسلنا کا بھیجا ہم نے ارسلنا کا ہم نے اللہ کہہ رہا ہے ہم نہیں بھیجا ہم نے اللہ رحمت للعالمی اللہ مطلب علاوہ رحمت للعالمی کے جب اللہ اللہ لڑاتا ہے تو اس میں شدت پیدا کرتا ہوتا ہے جیسے لا اللہ الا اللہ کوئی برشد کے لائق نہیں ہے علاوہ اللہ کے ایکسیپ اللہ ادھر اللہ کہہ رہا ہے کہ وما آسلنا کا اللہ یعنی کہ ہم نے نہیں بھیجا تھا تو ان رسول کو ان تم کو دائرے کھلا رہا ہے رحمت للعالمین رحمت للعالمین یہ سارے عالموں کے لئے رحم ہیں سارے عالموں کے لئے ایک حدیث شریف ہے حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی کہ اٹھارہ ہزار عالمی ہیں ایٹین تھاؤزن یونیورسز ایٹین تھاؤزن یونیورسز ہیں تو حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سارے عالموں کے لئے رحمت ہیں اور ہمارے شیخ شیخ مولا ہے اس تو صلی اللہ سے روح کرماتے ہیں کہ اس سے تم کیا سمجھتے ہو عالموں کے لئے رحمت بنا کے بھیجا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ نے اپنے حبیب کو عالم میں جو کچھ بھی آتا ہے سب کے لئے رحمت ہے چاہے وہ حجر ہو یا شجر ہو حتر ہو یا انسان ہو کوئی مخلوق ہو چاہے وہ سرہ ہو یا پوری پلانٹ ہو سب کے لئے حضور رحمت عالمی ہے اور ہم کو قرآن کی آئیتے ہیں ہم بلیورز ہیں you and us are all believers we believe like my younger brother said before we don't have to use brain because brain is for those who don't believe جیسے کہ میرے بھائی نے آیت کوٹ کری تھی پہلے بھائی نے کہ خالو ماں انتم اللہ بشر مسلنا جب نبی گیا تھا چھوڑا یاسین کی آیت ہے جب نبی گیا تھا اور انہوں نے نبی کو نہیں مانا انہوں نے یہ کافر ہے کافر انہوں نے نبی کو نہیں مانا تو سورہ یاسین میں کافر وہ کہتے ہیں کہ کافر سر سے کہ you are not but nothing but like us so Bashar the word Bashar Jews in the Quran quoted for another Nabi because they are calling him Bashar like us is by the kafirs by the kafirs we are Muslims because we are Muslims and like the brother said we don't do that because the first ayat of the Surah Bakra Alif Lami Zalika Kitabu Lari Bakri Alatina Jokinuna Bilal Baby because this is the book without doubt and who believed in this? Those people believe in this who believe in the prayer unforeseen. So when it comes to uh, belief, there is no brains. We believe in the prayer. And whatever we have, we respect. That is why we are here for the respect for our Holy Prophet and anything connected to him. His blessed khameez or his blessed chua or his blessed hair, we all respect that. And we send salaam salawat to you. Assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. ordered me to tell you the history of this Mumbai uh, Mubarak. We call it Mumbai Mubarak in, uh, in, in, in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan area. In Turkey and all those countries ruled by Turkey, which if you don't know, I mean the Sultan of Osmania ruled 55 nations at one time. 55. Not even America or Russia combined ruled that. So in those countries, Turkey and others, they call it Sakalan Sharif. The history of Sakal and Sharif is this is in the uh, many Hadith Sharif. Uh, one Hadith Sharif is Ghalib uh, al uh, Bukhari, but it's in the Sahih Sakal definitely. That when uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making, uh, doing the Hajj and his hairs were being cut, um, his Sahaba were doing Tawaf around him. The word Tawaf is used as an Arabic word, but 
But then with what's mean is they were running around him and they were fighting amongst each other to get his blessed hair which were falling from him. His blessed hair. Khalid bin Walid, he got his blessed hair and he used to use his blessed hair in his uh, taj or his helmet when he went to fight the jihad. Hazrat Usman was very famous for uh, having the blessed hair. And uh, my uncle uh, and uh, us are from the sons of Usmani Mani Our ancestors, uh, we got the Shitra uh, from the son of uh, Abban, Abban the, the elder son of Usman, that's who we are from, who was the Fakhi of uh, the Sultanate uh, and the Fadi Qada of the Sultanate afterwards. We are from his lineage. And uh, our ancestor, uh, Daniel Qadri, who is the 17th descendant of Hazrat Usman, he came to India fighting in the armies of Qutubuddin Abbas. He was a Qadi for Qutubuddin Abbas. So in the, in, in, in the nights he used to do worship and in the morning he used to do battle. And like Mahmud Ghaznavi uh, conquered uh, Ghaznavi, Kutubuddin Abbas conquered Badayun. Badayun also was the place of Buds. Badayun was the place of idols. So, Adyal Qadri came there and then he became the Qadri of uh, the next king who was Al-Tumash. al shifted his capital from Delhi to Badayun. Badayun is the only, that's the only kind of capital. Badayun was the capital of the Muk of the empire. And al is the, one of the most highest kings that you know from your history in the Indian subcontinent. Um, so, uh, the hair either came from our, our ancestor, the Khalifa Soyi, or also uh, is, there's uh, uh, also a very famous quote from our other ancestors, Fazal uh, Rasul Badayuni, he's my uncle's uh, set, uh, sixth grandfather. In the time of uh, the Badr, the mutiny, he was there, uh, the, the Mughal king at that time um, was his son, this was before the mutiny, before Badr, before the uh, rebellion, and his son was on the deathbed. So these people were not only alims, but they were also hakims or mathematicians and other things. So he was a hakim. So he went there and he cured his son from the deathbed. So the king, Mughal king, asked him what he wants. Now, for you who don't know now, all of these things, whether uh, the Abbasi or the Usmani or the Mughal, he was all lovers of Rasulullah and whatever is connected to Rasulullah. And he was famous for having a lot of tabarota, any gathering uh, things belonging to Rasulullah. So he said, okay, I asked for this. So he asked for a Qadam Shari, uh, which is also the, the, the footprint of the Rasulullah which my uncle did the research and he tells us that when Rasulullah went to Hiraj Sharif, just like Allah's other beloved Ibrahim his, his qadams, his footprint became into the stone. Similarly, Rasulullah's sangro, many, many footprints are there available around where, where he went to Hiraj. And people cut them from the rock and they got them. So my great 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 grandfather asked him for that. And, with, he, he, and then they say that the king was so respective of it that he brought that Adam Sharif to Badayun to, to, to him. And since then it's been with my uh, our grandfathers. And the same thing with the Sakhlen Sharif for the, and for the Moor Bar. So it's just been there. And it's, I have met this person, he's older than my father, in Connecticut. Maybe he passed away by married 10 years ago. He said himself he saw that my grandfather's grandfather. He cut the Sakhlan Sharif and gave it to, a, to the different uh, descendants. Why he cut it? Because this the quality of the Sakhlan Sharif, it grows. It grows. Because why? It is alive. This is the Mojza of Rasulullah. Like the Quran. Quran is a Mojza of Rasulullah. It's a Mojza of Rasulullah. Anything connected to Rasul, that's it. The, the scholars call that the biggest Mojza. But anything connected to Rasul is, is a Mojza. So he and he's, he's, he said that that grew and it grew, it 
give it, uh, that many branches that it has to be cut, that it wants to be passed, Allah wants it to be passed on. So he said, I will just take myself that it was cut in this year in the early 1900s and give it to the grandfather. So that's the history of this uh, whole body. going to stay in Surat Mushtikim and the other 72 they are going to deviate and we are living those days right now because Muslim nation, the Ummah Muhammad they have deviated not only a away from their nations but inside the nationality people they deviated from each other and they lost that faith but when it comes to the western understanding they are taking things very holy. For example, I know so many Muslims, they're taking trip going down to Egypt to visit what? The tombs of the Pharaohs, the Pharaohs. And so many, they are coming back, they are taking some stones and some sand from there thinking, I don't know what is their idea, but they're thinking that they are blessed. But they are going to the tombs of the Pharaohs, and they are accepting that. When it comes to the Holy Prayer of the Holy Prophet والسلام, so much confusion everywhere. Just take it as a history. It's 1400 years, over 1400 years, this Sakal Sharif has been saved. 
is the Prophet's beer, is a peace from the Prophet beer, alayhi salatu wasalam. So the Muslims, they are not bothering themselves with that. They are not trying to understand. They are not trying to connect their heart with that love to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, because the faith is getting lower and lower and lower. And the faith is not moving the heart anymore. You know, so many of you, you know, when we are saying salawat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, most of you putting your hand to your heart. Of course, as I say, most of the people, they lost that feeling too. They're not bothering themselves in any way because the heart is dead. It's clicking only for dunya, not for akhirat, not for profit. So why you think that tradition has reached to us from Sahabi Kiram. Sahabi Kiram, when the Prophet's name used to mention, their heart was jumping from his place and they had to hold their heart like that. That was the love that they had to the Prophet. So, Alhamdulillah, if you like to visit the beer of the Holy Prophet, you are welcome. If you think, that is so much confusion is going around. Some saying is bidat, innovation, shirk. Sit, don't bother yourself. But I tell you, almost every one of you, you went to every museum, right? There's a museum here. What's in those museums? Some clay jars that is came under the ground a couple of hundred years ago. People, they are taking it very high, very valuable. Definitely the Prophet's spear is more valuable than anything else in this world. And the Prophet's spear, as our brother said before, is living. I witnessed it also. I have another beer that it came to my hand from the, our grandfather's Sultan Abdul Hamid Han. And one day I was in seclusion and we have to cut that beer. And we cut the beer and the beer start growing again. So it's continuously growing, it's living, showing to us. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we will be opening this. This is the respect that the Ottoman Sultans, Selçuk Sultans, Mughal Sultans, and every one of them, the rulers of the world, the rulers of the world, they were ruling under the banner of Islam, the flag of Islam. The Sultans of Ottomans, every morning after the Fajr prayer, Sultan has to get up, has to crawl inside the room of the Prophet ﷺ, where his belongings are. From the beer, from the sword, from the jippe, from every, which there is one room up there, which they still today, is people, they go and visit it. But it's under the under other rooms, there is 86,000 pieces belongings of Prophet Sahabi Sahabi, Kiram, and all other people that they came. They packed it very nicely. It's still there, so many of them. So the Sultans, every morning, they used to enter into that room, crawling into the room, taking the dust of the room, because that time they didn't have this much of clothes and the wind is coming from every side so every day the dust coming in and the sultans they have to clean the room by themselves they have to take the dust they have to put it some other place when they die they have to bury it they put those dust into their tomb so the sultans they were showing the highest respect to the prophet's beer and the belongings and then with the banner with the ceremony, they were opening the flag of Islam from Istanbul. They were pulling when sun is rising and the flag of Islam was opening. And in the room that Holy Prophet's beer and every belonging was, 433 years non-stop recitation of Quran Kerim 24 hours a day. Up till 1923, when 23, one, someone, that we don't know where he's coming from. He bring fitna and confusion, and the Hilafat came down, and the Muslim nation 
Ümmeti Muhammed, they have deviated into different nationalities and then inside they have lost that faith that they have. And you know our situation today. I don't have to tell you nothing. You know how the West enter everywhere and what they are doing and you and I cannot do nothing. Most of you, most of us, we are helping them. That is the reality. How the Sultans, they did it. They didn't have the technology, they didn't have anything. Matter of fact, when they came to Istanbul to conquer Istanbul, it looked impossible. Just like one group of people coming to conquer whole America. But when Sultan came there, he came with the idea, with the heart, with the faith that the Holy Prophet said, one day this city is going to be conquered. And that city, that general is the highest and his army is the best of the army. And they didn't accept any boundaries. They didn't came with the planes, with atomic bombs, with sophisticated machines. They came with one sword and they are hard. And they give themselves for sake of Allah and they win up till 1923. And after that, we have lost. We didn't lose, we are falling down. It's about time to stand up again. Stop sleeping and wake up. Because if you don't wake up, Azrael is going to wake you up. If it's not tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, next week. Azrael is visiting every one of us. Doesn't matter what kind of life you choose to yourself, but in the end, you're going to leave everything and you're going to enter to the grave. Only thing that is going to stay with us, how much we have remembered our Lord and how many salawats we have sent to our Prophet. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Oh, 